Democrats Stacey Abrams and Andrew Gillum are calling on the Senate to reject President Trump's nomination of a federal judge in North Carolina, saying that he supported measures that disenfranchise black voters. They join all 49 Democrats who say they will vote against Thomas Farr's nomination as well. How did President Donald Trump's judicial nominee become such a lightning rod for civil rights advocates? Well, Farr is currently a Riley-based uh, employment attorney, but it's his past political work which is raising those concerns. Here are some of those instances. Back in 1990, Thomas Farr was the lead lawyer for former Senator Jesse Helms' election campaign. In that campaign, the Department of Justice filed a complaint against the Helms campaign and the North Carolina Republican Party for sending over 1,000 postcards largely targeting black voters. The DOJ said the intent of the postcards was to suggest black voters were not eligible and to discourage them from going to the polls. Farr denies knowledge of the postcard, saying he attended a meeting about ballot security. Farr also worked on defending a 2013 voter ID law, which included a controversial provision requiring residents to show ID before they could cast a ballot. It also eliminated same-day voter registration and voting on Sundays, a day where black voters show up to polls in significantly greater numbers than white ones. In its ruling, one of the federal appeals judges wrote this. He said, the General Assembly enacted legislation that restricted voting and registration in five different ways, all of which disproportionately affected African Americans. After a federal judge in 2016 struck down the legislature's 2011 map as a racial gerrymander, they passed another map with many of the same districts in place. They argued this time lawmakers were motivated by politics and not race. Farr was hired by the North Carolina Republican Party to defend those proposed boundaries. So I want to discuss now. Joining me now is Congressman G.K. Butterfield from North Carolina. He is the former chairman of the Congressional Black Caucus. So good to have you on. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Don. Good evening. So all, all 49 Democratic senators, the NAACP and the Congressional Black Caucus, they all oppose Thomas Farr's nomination. Why do you think President Trump nominated him? Well, here's what we have in North Carolina, Don. We have three federal judicial districts in the state, the eastern, the middle, and the western districts. The eastern district has never had an African-American judge in its history, nor has the western district. And so during the Obama years, we tried to persuade President Obama to appoint an African-American uh, to the federal bench, and he uh, did everything within his power to integrate the court, but each time he would nominate an African-American to the eastern district, it was blocked by the Republicans in the United States. Senate. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, uh, after Obama's second term, then President Trump uh, came along and instead of uh, nominating an African-American to the position, uh, chose to nominate Thomas Farr, probably the worst choice he could make in the state of North Carolina. Yeah. Uh, Thomas Farr has been very divisive. He has led the charge on behalf of the Republicans to set us back in, in voting rights and, mm -hmm. and disenfranchising African-American voters. He is the worst choice that President Trump could could, could choose. Let me read this because the NAACP called Farr the voter suppressor in chief. And then they said, they said, even among dangerous Trump nominees, Farr stands out for his decades long crusade to disenfranchise African Americans. He learned how to intimidate black voters from segregationist Senator Jesse Helms and helped turn North Carolina into ground zero for voter suppression. His nomination is a travesty. His confirmation would be heresy. Talk to us about his role specifically in voter suppression. Well, Thomas Farr started with Senator Jesse Helms many years ago, and he was part of the, the effort to disenfranchise African-American voters when, when Helms was challenged by Harvey Gantt in the Senate race of, of 1990. Uh, they sent out 125,000 postcards targeting African-American voters, suggesting that they could be arrested when they came to the polls. Mm. It was challenged. I remember it so very well. And they reached a consent decree, and the Helms campaign uh, uh, suspended any further postcard deliveries. But uh, Thomas Farr has has been involved in voter disenfranchisement for years. Uh, he has represented the North Carolina legislature. He's been the one who's gone in court and has defended voter ID and the, and the, the discriminatory election systems and district maps that have been drawn. He is the worst choice that President Trump could have chosen for the federal district court. It certainly yeah. seems to be a thing there in the South with voter suppression because voter suppression played a role uh, in both Governor 
races in Florida and in Georgia, as well as ugly, um, you know, racist robocalls. Both Democratic candidates, Andrew Gellum and Stacey Abrams, issued a statement today uh, on FAR. Here's what they said. They said, we call on all U.S. senators who revere our democracy, who put that democracy above party loyalty, to reject this nomination and deny Thomas FAR the platform to continue his crusade against voting rights. What's the message uh, representative to African Americans if FAR takes this seat? Look, we have been asking for years to integrate the Eastern District in North Carolina. The public depends on a fair judiciary, and to have an all-white judiciary in the Eastern District of North Carolina is unfair to the voters and unfair to the administration of justice. Mm -hmm. We are calling on the United States Senate to reject Thomas Farr, uh, and let's just start over. Let's just wait for this Congress to expire, come, in, come back into the 116th Congress, and let's find a consensus candidate, someone who can who can be fair and impartial and who does not bring the baggage that Thomas Farr brings to this process. Let's talk about someone now who um, played such a big role in the confirmation of uh, Brett Kavanaugh because Armando Raju is reporting that Senator Susan Collins, uh, a potential swing vote, says that she will likely vote in in favor uh, of Farr. Uh, but Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina isn't on board yet. Senator Jeff Flake says that he'll decide on, on the merits. How do you see this playing out? Well, all of the Democrats in the United States Senate are united in opposition to Thomas Farr. We believe that Senator Flake is going to be voting no, uh, and, and hopefully we can get Senator Scott or, or one of the other Republican senators who, who really understands the importance of the judiciary uh, to vote against this nomination. Uh, we need to start over. We need to wait until next year, let all of the senators settle down and find a consensus judge for North Carolina and not try to ramrod Thomas Farr threw at the last moment before the session expires.